Good morning, everyone. Welcome to First UMC of Hammond. My name is Chris. I'm the pastor here, and I am so glad that you have joined us this morning. Uh, it's going to be a bit different this morning. Uh, we are not able to go live on Facebook right now. The video will be available later for you to watch. We do apologize for any inconvenience that that does cause. You know, from week to week, these uh, softwares are updated and it can be difficult to know what needs to be changed from week to week. So we definitely appreciate your patience as we uh, once again navigate virtual worship. Of course, we are in... Uh, uh, week two of going back to uh, no in-person worship in our uh, physical space at uh, 6635 uh, Holman Ave, but uh, uh, we're glad to be here with you virtually uh, next week. Uh, as you do know, if you have uh, received the email, we will be sending out a snail mail version of what did go out, but uh, in concert with church leadership, I've decided to uh, go to solely virtual worship through the end of November uh, as numbers in our county and around the state uh, for COVID-19 spike. I believe it's incumbent on us to show leadership and to show an abundance of caution, not only for the community around us, but for our very own folks. So uh, uh, that does present some challenges, as was mentioned in that letter, but uh, I will let you look through that. And uh, uh, yes, yeah, so uh, what we will be in person, uh, uh, no in-person worship through the end of November, uh, but next week we will be broadcasting from the sanctuary, at least to give a, a semblance of uh, uh, some normalcy. So uh, uh, as we begin this morning, this is All Saints Sunday. We're beginning the end of the Christian year, which begins with Advent. So we're, uh, uh, we're marking some important times in the church year, and this is the day where we uh, remember all of those who have gone uh, before us, those who have died in our local congregation this year, uh, and we remember all of the saints who have gone before us that have uh, taught us our faith, who have uh, brought us up in our faith, and are responsible for where we are and who we are as a faith and as a person uh, in connection to the uh, creator of the heavens uh, and the earth. Uh, so today we will uh, be honoring uh, those names this morning. Uh, we will have a more full celebration uh, and remembrance of uh, All Saints Day once we return to in-person worship. This is one of our one of the communal events. I think this is uh, better done in person. But uh, we want to mark this day in the church calendar. But when we get back into in-person worship, uh, we will do a more full uh, remembrance uh, and a memorial of, of the of these names uh, when we get there. And I believe that uh, that is all for housekeeping and announcements. And so we will begin this morning as we begin every morning with our call and response, where I say, O oh Lord, open our lips and you respond and we shall declare your praise. Are you ready? O oh Lord, open our lips and we shall declare your praise. O oh Lord, open our lips and we shall declare your praise. O Lord, open our lips, and we shall declare your praise. God 
Good morning. Will you please pray with me? Lord God, as we gather today around your name, we pray that you would fill our hearts, our minds, and our souls. Transform us, Lord, and make us more like you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Pastor Chris, can I, I can't hear you. I apologize. No, no, thank you very much. I'm so sorry about that, everyone. I'm glad someone stopped me before we got too far into this. All Saints is a day of remembrance for the saints with the New Testament, meaning of all Christian people of every time and place. We celebrate the communion of saints as we remember the dead, both of the church universal and of our local congregations for this reason the names of the persons in the congregation who have died during this past year may be solemnly read as a response to the moment grace to you and peace from god who is and was and is to come and from jesus christ the faithful witness the firstborn of the dead the ruler of kings on earth the grace of the Lord Jesus be with all the saints. And in this time, we name those saints. Carolyn Bryan. Lois Wade. (laughs) 
David Roman. Robert Biscan. Ralph Shower. Athene Napic. Anna Barnes. Mark Beagle. William Olson. Wilfredo Roman. Jimmy Miller. Ermit Finch. Dick Nelson. Paul Finning. Paul G. McCoy. Emma G. McCoy. Jim Kidsman. Cheryl Walker. Bishop Mike Coiner. Would you pray with me? We bless your holy name, O God, for all your servants who, having finished their course, now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind. grace that taught my heart to fear and grace my fears relieved how precious did that grace appear the toils 
toils and snares I have already come tis grace hath brought me safe thus far and grace will lead me home when we been there ten thousand years, bright shining as the sun. We've known less days to sing God's praise than when we first In this time, once I remember at what point we are in the service, uh, I we would usually in the service uh, be taking up offering. In this moment, let me uh, take this time to uh, in. Uh, invite you to give to the ministry of First UMC as you are able, uh, certainly, and you can do that uh, through a number of ways. Uh, you can uh, send your tithes, as you uh, uh, might have already been doing, to the uh, church, 6635 Holman Avenue in Hammond. Uh, you can set up an auto pay through your bank. Uh, you can also give through our tithely link on our uh, homepage, on our uh, homepage on our website, uh, HammondFUMC.org, and follow the Tithely link, and that is how you can uh, give and uh, support the ministry of uh, First UMC of Hammond, and uh, uh, as you might be able to tell, as with a lot of uh, churches and other nonprofits, COVID has uh, taken uh, its toll uh, on uh, budgets for nonprofits and churches that were already pretty strapped, and uh, so as you are able, we uh, want to invite you uh, to give as you are able. And in this time, we will enter a time of prayer. And so now as we enter this time of prayer, <clears throat> excuse me, I will invite you to share your praises and prayer requests in the comment section. If you on Zoom, click the chat um, icon at the bottom of your screen, you can share your praises and prayer requests in the chat section. Um, I would like for us to continue to pray for those on our prayer list, uh, Jenny Beza, Roger Collier, Kathy Clark, Don and Joanne Harris, Sandy Kisman, Jerry Kolonowski, Cameron Little, Bernie Newell, Alan Piowar, Logan Polich, Jane Shower, Amanda Serna, Henry and Pat Showers, Nancy and John Steele, Ella Tiedemann, the family of Cheryl Walker, Cheryl Walters. We should continue to pray for the South Holland Fire Department and the family of Dylan Cunningham 
as well as those who are homebound or living in residential facilities, Adele Gowries, Jim Mowry, and Borough Puckering. Um, Arlo uh, Tiedemann continues to need prayers as well as he uh, is recovering from um, a virus that in conjunction with his asthma is causing him to be just a sad boy at times. But I, I continue to get videos from Chris and Emily and he has moments of happiness and joy. So that's a good sign. Um, Sarah is looking for uh, prayers. Um, her sister's friend Dee gave birth to her son Noah. That's great news. He is still in the hospital with breathing, breathing concerns. We're hoping he'll be released this week. Um, so a joy as well as a prayer request. One from Jane Harper Alport, prayers for healing and restored health following cardiac intervention and stinting of 90% blocked artery near the heart. Um, is, is that for you, Jane, or a family member? But we will pray nonetheless. Jason, um, a family of the family of Damian Hansen on his passing on Thursday, the Garza family um, on grieving the passing of their father, uh, Florencio Garza. Uh, so we'll continue to pray for those families. And yes, Jane, um, that was for her. So we'll continue to pray for Jane. I do appreciate the prayers um, for, uh, for me as I did test positive for COVID. Uh, my symptoms have subsided around Thursday. So I haven't really had any symptoms since Thursday. So I appreciate those that have reached out um, and continue to pray for me as well as the Tiedemann family who um, continue to be in quarantine, but I believe they will be out of quarantine. Um, I think tomorrow is what Emily said. Um, I got a message from Rosalie as well, and she found um, a pain doctor who's helping her. So that is a praise for Rosalie. Um, Pat Mosley is asking for prayers for our country. Um, that is, uh, we definitely need prayers for our country. Continue to pray for those on the front line who seek or who are um, helping trying to bring this COVID um, under control, but continue to put themselves in harm's way. So we pray for those um, doctors and nurses working on the front line and anybody else who has uh, coronavirus. Um, while my COVID has um, subsided, um, I do have a condition in my eyes that needs regular treatment. And because I've been in quarantine, I haven't been getting treatment um, in my eyes. <clears throat> and so my left eye, I've lost most of my central vision in my left eye. Um, so uh, my vision has been impaired as a result of this for separate issues. Um, so I see my um, retina specialist Friday and hopefully um, the treatment that I normally get uh, will work and I don't have any permanent damage. So I would ask for prayers for, um, for seeing for me. And if there aren't any others, um, if you'd like to continue to add your praises and prayer requests, we will lift those up throughout the week. But now please uh, ready our minds, our hearts and our souls as we enter a time of prayer. Most holy God, we are a people who need you in your fullness as creative father, redeeming son, and sustaining spirit. Our lives have complications and pain. Our world has war and despair, but we are made in your image and your spirit has, has, was breathed into us that we might experience hope in your goodness. There are situations, Lord, that make it hard to be aware of that goodness. And we pray for those whose lives are affected by the negativity of these circumstances. When storms and hurricanes are so strong, they destroy even the homes designed to withstand them. When political battles bring out pettiness over issues too important for bickering, when our hearts ache, hurt by broken relationships and unmet expectations, when we are exhausted emotionally from illness in ourselves or those we love, and when we are overwhelmed by loneliness and isolation, even though you are always with us. With us. Gracious and merciful Lord, our church is working to hear the words of your spirit. Our desire is to learn what and who you are calling us to be in your world. We call out to you that we might have the courage to give to you whatever burdens we entered with today so that our hearts and minds can be open to you, to your word, and to your spirit, the same life-giving breath from the first of creation. Christ challenges us to know you, God, 
as one who would search us out if we are lost. But we must also know that when we are not the one, we are members of 99 waiting together for your guidance. So it is together that we use our breath to pray the words Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. Meanwhile, Saul was still spewing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest, seeking letters to the synagogues in Damascus. If he found persons who belonged to the way, whether men or women, these letters would authorize him to take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. During the journey, as he approached Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven encircled him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice asking him, Saul, Saul, why are you harassing me? Saul asked, who are you, Lord? I am Jesus whom you are harassing, came the reply. Now get up and enter the city. You will be told what you must do. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. O oh Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So again, if you have seen the bulletin, you'll know that uh, it says humble pie, and that was going to be the name of the message for this morning, but uh, I chose one and its title is Saintly Sinners, and I think it's important on All Saints Day to point out that no matter who it was that uh, was a person who became a saint, they were at one point in their existence a sinner, as we all are. And so underlining that, very often we try to, in times of division and hatred we try to, to draw defining lines and we say we like to say well we agree on 80 percent of stuff and it's just that 20 percent well now we I think maybe instead of trying to focus on that maybe maybe we understand where it is or who it is that, that we are and that is that we are all flawed understanding where we are at a baseline as human beings and understanding that we're all pretty much there and it's 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 God who then takes us from there and makes us into God who who God wants us to be but saintly sinners then we know some of these saintly sinners and maybe they're more sinners than saints uh, maybe they're all sinner and no saint but uh, you know I don't know, we all know these people in our lives, and uh, I, I have taken to say of some of these people, you know, they're not, uh, you know, they're jerks, but they're, they're my jerk, you know, something like that. But, the, you know, these, these are folks that we put up with because we share a closeness to them, a relationship, right? And, and you know what, even though he may have taught us how to, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, dismantle and repair a carburetor i don't know uh but uh, our uncles who enjoy those uh, those off color and racist jokes just a little too much or or our longtime friends that uh you know it was it was funny when we were kids and now when it's adult when we're adults uh, we we try to we find it hard to stick around with them all the time but you know what there are jerks so and maybe even our spouses i don't know i don't know what what, what situation you're in but we know these people then there are the figures that we lionize, even though we have that the, there are troublesome aspects to their lives. Say the founding fathers, right? These were individuals who created what is uh, one of the great modern societies, and yet they were slave owners and had views that we would consider not just backward but abhorrent and and unthinkable today and then there are people like henry ford 
right? This this is an important person in the uh, history of uh, American uh, auto, uh, auto automation. Uh, well, yeah, American automation, inventing the assembly line. But uh, Henry Ford was quoted by Hitler. You know, it ran the Dearborn Independent, a, a virulently uh, anti-Semitic uh, publication. But, you know, Henry Ford created the assembly line, had a great effect on how we do things today. And then there are like people we may just have in the back of our mind or didn't even realize, like Roald Dahl, all right, gave us the uh, uh, material that gave us Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, really the greatest iteration of Roald Dahl's work in any, in any case. But, uh, but Roald Dahl thought Hitler made some good points. It can be troublesome. And, and we look outside of faith and see people like about that. But then there are even folks in the faith Right, Martin Luther, uh, speaking of uh, about this time of year, Reformation uh, time of year, there is Martin Luther who, as he grew older, he was not only rude in his later writings, but anti-Semitic as well, where his some of his teachings were used by the Third Reich as their, uh, well, and, and anti-Semites throughout the, the centuries use uh, Martin Luther's work uh, as justification. And this one might not be, uh, well, it just depends on what your view of, of a Christian's uh, personal experience with alcohol is. But uh, a John Wesley, good guy, but uh, was a fan of beer and printed brewing instructions. Uh, and, you know, take that for what it's worth. You know, if you have a problem with Christians and alcohol, certainly that might not be your cup of tea. And you might look at John Wesley a little differently. I don't, but I'm not everyone. And then there's the Reverend Dr. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. His legacy and work is important, unlike many in our history, but uh, famously unfaithful to his wife. And that these, these figures that we lionize, even in our faith, can have these incredibly, uh, incredible personal failings. But that's not really the point of our faith, is to look at people who have done some of these great things and point out in their lives where they have gone wrong. I, not that we don't do that. Certainly there is that criticism, but that's not the point of our faith. A man by the name of Thomas Fuller says, he that falls into sin is a man that grieves at it is a saint, that boasteth of it is a devil. And in that we see the difference. He that falls into sin is not the devil, is not evil, but is a man, a human being that grieves at it is a saint, that boasteth of it is the devil. Perhaps worse than all that even, Saul of Tarsus, or as we would later know him, Paul is one of those that have, we can have a I don't want to use the term love-hate relationship with, but uh, there were some darker parts of his life, right? A Judaizer, very dedicated to punishing the Jewish faith to the exclusion of everyone else. And by exclusion, I mean death. Went around to synagogues to get permission to hunt down people of the way of Jesus Christ, hunting Christians. He felt justified in his quest, as many fundamentalists do, as many of us do. He was a fiend and a zealot. And this is where I have to pause. I read a commentary this week that, that made this argument. This encounter certainly changes the trajectory of his life, the one from our passage earlier, as well as his belief system, but it shouldn't be characterized as a bad man turning good. Saul's devotion and zeal to Judaism isn't what was incorrect. Rather, it was the ways he directed his zeal toward persecuting the people of the way. Saul's encounter with Jesus transforms his mission from searching out Jews whom he considers to be unfaithful to seeking out Gentiles so they might become faithful. Essentially saying Paul wasn't a, Saul wasn't a bad guy. He just needed to redirect his energies. That is one way to look at it, as if to say that, that yeah, you know, he did some bad things when he killed those Christians. But, uh, you know, short of that, you know, it, 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 maybe we want to hold on. 
But with all due respect, Saul's misdirected energy let him to act out in violent ways. And any faith that leads you to act in such violent ways is a flawed faith. Not to say Judaism is a flawed faith. Those who would, who would use it in such a fashion are flawed. You know, we, we still see this today. We, we, we let people off the hook in certain ways, right? We let leaders off the hook for incredible travesties because that's a, we need to deal with these things that these things that happen. This is who Paul was. This is who Paul became. This is who we were. This is who we are to become or have become. We need to deal with the, this is the transformation that doesn't always happen from point A to point B. And that's it. Sometimes you swing back to point A and point B. I'm saying these, these, just like when we look at people like the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., would we, would we completely disown his thoughts and and the ways he mobilized people and in the fashion that he mobilized them would we turn those away because of some of his personal failings no we don't do that it's indicative of our faith that we take a more nuanced approach to these things the faith of saul was so heinous that he even needed to change his name If your faith leads you to harm, hate, excuse evil, tolerate the worst because it suits our felt desires, then you need to throw out that faith and start over. The starting over part is possible for all and a necessity for some. I'm sorry, a necessity for all, possible for all. A necessity still for some, that's what I meant to say. And this happens for Paul. He's approached by a heavenly light, encounters God, is blinded, and then encounters Ananias, who helps him see who he is to become. Paul, MLK, others, are what we can call saintly sinners. A realization that while we are people of the way of Jesus Christ, we're also human. In much the same way we, well, not the same way, but we often forget that as we do attribute both humanity and divinity to Jesus, we often will just pitch the humanity part because we want to focus on the divinity part. And when we do that, whether it's purposeful or not, that separates us from Christ, right? It's, it then puts whatever Christ did do, whatever Christ accomplished in his life in terms of, well, Christ was divine, so Christ can do that and should have done that. Well, that's not required of me. Well, we can put not just, we can put the miracles and everything else that Christ did out of our reach, but, but the, the reaching out to people in the way that Jesus did, despite pride, despite ego, reaching out into people's lives. We put that at a distance when we put aside the the humanity of Christ, because just as Christ lived sinlessly, just as Christ lived sinlessly, that is our goal. Now, we will never get there, but it's what we work towards, and we can work towards it. It's what we should work towards. It's part of what Wesley uh, would, uh, that, that, that tripartite understanding of a grace that John Wesley had, uh, prevenient, justifying, and sanctifying grace that prevenient grace of God to all in all times, allowing God to work through anything and anyone, no matter how sinnerly or saintly you feel or think you are, believe yourself to to be. Even the person or thing you'd least expect could be the thing that God chooses to work or speak through. Even the person or thing you'd least expect could be the thing that God chooses to work or speak through. Saintly sinners are as much saints as they are sinners. And they wouldn't be the saint they were, but for the sinner that they were. As long as we are allowing God to do God's work in and through us, allowing the amazing and transformative grace of God to conquer us, 
not just convince us, but to conquer us. Have you been conquered by the grace of God, by God's love and God's work in and through you? Have you allowed that to conquer you? And as long as that's still possible, there's nothing wrong with being a saintly sinner, for we all are. Teresa of Avalon says this, it is true that we cannot be free from sin, but at least let our sins not be always the same. It's a constant growing. We are all saintly sinners. Christians, present, past, and future. And with hearts seeking just that, Jesus invites us to the table he's prepared. And as uh, Rachel Held Evans once said, this is what God's kingdom is like. A bunch of outcasts, oddballs gathered at a table, not because they are rich or worthy or good, but because they are hungry, because they said yes. And there's always room for more. There is always room for more at God's table. Let us sing our hymn of communion as we prepare to go to that table. The table is set, now let us prepare our hearts and our minds for Holy Communion. The table of bread is now to be made ready. It is the table of company with Jesus and all who love him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table 
of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed, come. It is Christ who invites us to meet him here. John Wesley believed that communion sustains us as we go out and do the work of Jesus Christ. So we should do it often. Let us pray. Loving God, through your goodness, we have this bread and wine to offer, which has come forth from the earth and human hands have made. May we know your presence and sharing so that we may know your touch and presence in all things. We celebrate the life that Jesus has shared among his community through the centuries and shares with us now. Made one in Christ and one with each other, we offer these gifts and with them ourselves, a single living act of praise. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. divine all loves excelling joy of heaven to earth come down fix in us thy humble dwelling all thy faithful mercies crown jesus thou art all compassion pure unbounded love thou Visit us with thy salvation, enter every trembling heart. Breathe, O oh breath, thy loving spirit into every troubled breast. Let us all in thee inherit. Let us find that second rest. Take away our bent to sinning. Alpha and Omega be. End of faith as its beginning. Set our hearts at liberty. Come, Almighty, to deliver, let us all thy life receive. Then we return and never, never more thy templates leave. Thee we would be always blessing, serve thee as thy host above. Pray and praise thee without ceasing, glory in thy perfect love. Finish then thy new creation, pure and spotless let us be. Let us see thy great salvation perfectly restored in thee. Change from glory into glory till in heaven we take our place till we cast our crowns before thee lost in wonder love and praise i am so happy that you joined us this morning thank you those who jumped over from facebook and joined us despite the technical difficulties thank you all for sticking with us uh, uh, here we'll be still in uh, zoom next week and hopefully we'll be back on facebook i don't see any 
reason why that wouldn't happen. Uh, we will join you. The small team of us will join you from the sanctuary uh, next week uh, at 10 o'clock, uh, but join us weekdays at nine as well for what a day and uh, stay tuned for the uh, postlude video. Have uh, a, a wonderful day. And as you leave this place, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you all and give you peace. Amen. Goodbye, everyone. Thank you.